Slow down and enjoy life. It's not only the scenery you miss by going too fast, you also miss the sense of where you are going and why. Eddie Cantor. Today, let's explore the book, The Things You Can See Only When You Slow Down, by Heyman Sunim. This book emphasizes the importance of slowing down to enjoy life and find happiness. Even though the world moves fast, we don't always have to keep up. Heyman Sunim, a Buddhist monk from Korea who studied in the USA, shares advice on various topics like dealing with failures, love, peace of mind, and building good relationships. His simple messages address common problems in modern life and remind us that slowing down can bring happiness and peace. When you slow down your thoughts, the world around you slows down too. In this video, we will discuss all methods. So let's get started. Let's begin with the first method, rest. When life feels too fast, pause and ask, is the world busy or is it my mind? Our mindset shapes how we see the world. If you're happy, the world seems happy. If you're sad, the world looks sad. Understanding your mind is as important as changing your life. Bad events don't make us sad. Our thoughts about them do. Let go of negative thoughts to reduce their impact. Just observe your feelings without reacting. Think of your mind as the sky and your emotions as passing clouds. The sky stays clear even when clouds come and go. To handle stress, rest is key. Meditate, exercise, talk to a mentor, and focus on love and kindness. Positive actions weaken negative feelings. Listen to a happy song, visit a place you love, or spend quiet time alone. Write down your stressors and how you plan to stay calm. This moves stress from your mind to paper, helping you relax. Rest after writing and start with the easiest task the next day. Next, let's talk about mindfulness. Once, a monk asked, I feel sad and terrible about the past. What should I do? The advice was to observe feelings without trying to change them. They will fade naturally. Watch your feelings for a few minutes and you'll see them change. Positive emotions grow and negative ones weaken. You can't control your feelings, just like you can't control the weather. They come and go. Don't see them as part of your identity. You are the observer of these feelings. Meditation helps you see this. The monk then asked, how can I keep my mind calm while meditating? The answer was not to try to remove thoughts, but to observe them. Awareness will naturally calm your mind. Our minds are often focused on the outside world. Happy people look inward to slow down their thoughts. Bring your mind to the present to calm unnecessary thoughts. Instead of repeating negative thoughts, look at the feelings behind them and just observe. Let feelings come and go. Nothing is permanent. Everything changes. Spend your time wisely and beautifully. Let's explore the concept of being happy together. Everyone has different beliefs and thoughts. The person who accepts these differences and doesn't always try to be right stays happy with others. But the one who always tries to be right ends up alone. Take Rachel's story, a psychologist and relationship advisor. She grew up valuing being right because her parents were lawyers. However, she learned that this mindset hurt her relationships. She noticed that couples who focused on being right were unhappy. Those who listened, understood, and loved each other were happy despite their differences. Once, a couple on the brink of divorce came to Rachel. They had different views on many things. Rachel encouraged them to share their expectations and fears openly. By understanding and compromising, they rekindled their love. We all have our own beliefs and values. Sometimes, we must spend time with people who disagree with us. Conversations about politics or life can quickly turn into arguments. No one feels heard or respected, leading to anger and hurt. To be happy with each other, ask yourself if it's worth hurting someone to prove you're right. Trying to get someone to agree with you is just satisfying your ego. Even if you're proved right, your ego won't be satisfied and you'll start trying to prove yourself right again. Moving on, let's discuss building good relationships. Maintaining good relationships is like sitting near a fireplace. If you sit too close, you might get burned. If you sit too far, you won't feel the warmth. Similarly, if you stay too close to someone without reason, you'll feel trapped. But if you make little effort to connect with friends and family, you won't feel their love. So, it's important to find a balance. The author shares a story about a Korean magistrate named Ming Siang. He was wise and successful but became proud. One day, 
He asked a Zen Buddhist master how to rule his district well. The master replied, avoid evil and do good for many people. Meng Xiang thought this advice was too simple. The master then poured tea into Meng Xiang's cup until it overflowed. Meng Xiang pointed out that the tea was spilling. The master said, just as too much tea spills, too much knowledge can ruin one's character. Embarrassed, Meng Xiang realized he needed to be humble. Too much pride leads to problems. If we are polite and respectful, we can avoid these issues. Our ego often makes us act in ways that hurt others. The author explains that if someone challenges his religion, he listens respectfully and thanks them for their perspective. Arguing to win only hurts others, even if you win. Loving without expectation. Ruth Bader Ginsburg, a U.S. Supreme Court judge, and Martin Ginsburg, a lawyer, shared a beautiful love story. They met at Cornell University, fell in love, and married in 1954. They had two children, Jane and James. Throughout their 50-plus years together, they supported each other both personally and professionally. Ruth encouraged Martin to pursue his law career, and they shared household duties to focus on their careers. Despite challenges like Ruth's cancer, their love remained strong. Ruth often said Martin was her biggest supporter and a key to her success. Their love was built on mutual respect, care, trust, and support. Love makes life beautiful. It means trusting, being there for someone, and listening wholeheartedly. To know if it's true love, ask yourself if you're willing to give more for your partner's happiness. True love means loving someone as they are, without trying to change them. It's about wanting their soul, not their looks or status. Now, let's look at three ways to be happy in life. Accept that people think about you less than you think. Do you remember what your friend wore last week? Probably not. So, why worry about how you appear to others? People are more focused on themselves. Not everyone needs to like you. Just as you have your favorite people, others have theirs. If someone doesn't like you, it's okay. You can't control their feelings. Focus on those who appreciate you. Follow your heart. Stop worrying about what others think. Pursue your dreams and desires. Write down places you want to visit, people you want to meet, and things you want to do. Start small and take steps towards your goals. Positive thoughts lead to positive actions and ultimately, your destiny. Finally, let's talk about how a word of encouragement can change someone's life. The author shares a childhood story about a strict teacher whose son was in the same class. Both were average students. One day, the author played at a friend's house and got scared when the teacher came home. Instead of scolding, she praised him, saying he would become a role model and bring happiness to others. This encouragement had a profound impact. The author started studying hard and became a bright student, professor, and spiritual author. A single word of encouragement can change someone's life. In the end, take a moment to breathe and appreciate the present. Remember, true happiness comes from within and is nurtured by mindfulness and love. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that like button, and share your thoughts in the comments below. Stay tuned for more engaging content.